Have you fell in love with some African violets online and you want to order leaves but you don't know how to grow them? I can help you with that. Starting African violet plants by cuttings is very, very easy. It takes a little bit of time, but not much work. To start, naturally, you will need an African violet leaf to plant. Now, if you're buying online, you will receive something that looks like this, and that's what you work with. However, if you are removing something from your plants and or friend's plants, you will want to choose specific leaves. Now, everything on an African violet can grow. However, the older the leaves become, the less chances the babies will pop out of them. So the perfect leaves that we want to choose, if possible, will be the third row leaves. Now, this is a row. You can count by threes. It gives a good idea. Now, if we start in the middle, one, two, three, and then four, uh, one, two, three, that will be the first row. Then one, two, three will be the second row. And then we have the third row that starts. Now, these, the third row leaves, are the really perfect leaves to start with. If you don't have a choice and you start with the outer leaves, that's not a problem. They, sh they could produce and they should. It's just that they are older and less vigorous than the third row leaves. Now, for the purposes of this video, I will be using one of the bigger leaves because just it will be easier to show everything with a big one. Simply cut off the leaf. And then you want to cut it in a 45 degree angle, about an inch from the top. Now, the length of the stem that will go in the soil is also important. And the reason for this, and I will show you, if you were to plant a leaf deep like this in a pot, the babies will start at the bottom. First of all, the leaf will produce roots. And later on, when it's time, the babies will pop right here around the stem, and then they will go up to the along the stem and pierce out right here at the soil. Now, Every, the longer the distance is, the more time it will take for your babies to show up. So we want to plant a little um, less deep in the soil so the babies will come out quicker and pop the soil. They, they won't come out quicker if they're planted um, closer to the surface, but they will not need as much time to grow along the stem and come out. Now, an even faster method is to lie the leaf down like this just barely covering it with soil just enough so everything stays moist and then they don't have to travel up they're right there uh, on the soil line so as soon as the babies will um, grow out of the leaf they will pop out of the soil and then start growing faster of course there are many methods to starting african violet leaves some will start them in water some in pure perlite or vermiculite or there's many, many ways to do it. You can have fun and try different methods. Today I will show you the very, very simple method in soil. The soil that you should be using is a peat moss based soil. You don't want to use heavy, dark earth from uh, the, the soil that we use in outdoor gardening. And it should be peat, peat moss based. And the reason for this is the African violet roots are very, very um, delicate. And we want a nice, fluffy, airy soil so the roots can get through it. Otherwise, the roots will have to fight their way through every, all the soil to, to grow, and it makes it more difficult for the plant. And when you're using very, very heavy soil, it's harder on, uh, it's, it stays wetter longer, and it's not as airy. And African violets tend to rot in that type of soil. Now, if you're not sure what a peat moss base is and you're very new to gardening, just go to any hardware store or big box store, Walmart, and just find a soil that is marked with African violet on it. Soil for African violet. And that will be good to start off. Now, if your soil is dry, this is very, very dry. You will want to um, let it soak up water before. This was standing for many days, so it kind of dries up, dried up. So you want to get this moistened up. And I will be back in a bit with moist soil. Now, if you're just starting out and don't have a lot of pots and materials to work with, that's not a problem. You can use just about anything to plant leaves. The important thing is that you will need to create a hole in the bottom of any pot that you will use. And you just, I slice them. Some will use the drills to drill and the, or the heating things to pierce through. It doesn't matter. 
the results are the same. Now, this hole is super important. Don't leave home without it. So what we want to do is just add some soil into the pot. Now I'm going to simply pat down like this and remove the rest. The thing you do not want to do is squish it all down like this. As I mentioned before, the roots of the African violets are very delicate and the more compact it is, the harder it's going to be for them to get out of there. So what we want is simply fill up. You can tap two times and there you go. It's very, very fluffy. There's no, uh, no compacting whatsoever. And then my soil is already um, damp. But I'm going to put these in the water to let them soak up completely. And I will be back when that's all done. Now when we plant the African violet leaves, we will want to plant them in damp soil, not wet. This is super important because wet, anything wet wants to make a violet rot. It, that's how it works. So my little pots have been soaking in the water and they have too much water in it. And you're thinking, how the heck am I supposed to know when it's damp or not or wet? Well, a simple thing you can do is let them rest on a newspaper for a little bit. What happens is the newspaper, this is a little trick I found out a long time ago, the newspaper is very dry and will simply pull all of the excess water out of the little, uh, the soil. And it will take a few minutes, but you can prepare these in advance and just let them sit there. After a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes, you will come back and see, well, it, it will all, see it's soaking out, soaking the excess, the paper will become wet and the soil in the little pots will become damp. And that is what we want. Okay, so I have left my little pots on the newspaper for a little bit. And as you can see, there's water that's come out and it's soaking up into the newspaper. And these are still a little bit wet, but it's okay. It's okay for the demonstration. Okay, so now we need our leaf again and I will show you how to do this. We will want again to cut a little slice, 45 degree angle. You want to leave about an inch of the leaf and then you can simply make a tiny little hole and lie it down on the soil. You just want to barely cover it. You want to make, you don't want to tap it down really hard, but just make sure that the soil is all touching the end of the stem. If the soil is not touching the end of the stem, the stem will not drink any water and it will just dry up and die. And this is how it looks like. Now the babies will pop out right here in about a month or two it all depends it's mother nature at this point some come out in a month some will start showing up after three weeks some will take six months it's not our choice we have to go with with uh, nature <laughs> and eventually it will look like this now i will show you what to do with this clump in another video Sometimes you're going to deal with very, very big leaves and something else that you can do if you feel courageous enough is simply cut the top portion off, the, off of the leaf. What this will do, it will leave more energy for the rooting of the leaf and you can just make it a little bit smaller like this. The more of the leaf that remains on the leaf will have to be supported in some way. So if we reduce the surface of the, of the leaf, it will put more energy towards rooting out and making babies. Another thing that can happen is this. This is when you're, uh, when you're ordering offline, occasionally you will receive a leaf like this that the stem is broken off. Now there's no more stem to plant. And we can, what we can do is produce a new stem. This is the center stem. This is what will, uh, this needs to stay on. So you just want to find the ribs and just gently cut both sides on both sides of the rib and we are going to create a new stem now this is called wedging and it does work I'm going to create another 45 degree angle cut and then simply put it in the soil like the other one it's a new leaf now we want to plant only the stem portion right there we don't want this portion to touch the soil because they tend to rot. So just gently slide it in, a little packing to leave it in. And this is the same. You don't 
the soil line should come up to here. These parts should not be touching the soil. In very, very rare cases, we can have leaves that are very, very curly and you're seeing, you're seeing big portions of this coming down lower. When that happens, you can simply snip them off like this. Of course, it becomes a wedge again. But if they're touching the soil and it's creating a stem that's too long, you can remove them. And there you go. Now that you have all your leaves planted up, you will want to find a clear container or a bag, or I don't have anything else to show you at the moment, and sorry about that. You will want to find something that will that you can put them in that will keep the humidity up a little higher. Freshly planted leaves or little babies like these will go into, once these are separated up and planted, will go into containers also. This will create a very nice little microclimate where they will be very happy. And you want to set this into either under lights if you have them. If you don't, you will want to use one of those windows where the, not the afternoon hot window, but any other window will do. We want the daylight sun and not the hot sunshine of the afternoon that will cook them out. Concerning the fertilizers, you can fertilize these in a few weeks. Right now, there's no sense uh, fertilizing them because they don't have any roots to uh, take up the fertilizer. Any fertilizer you want to use, you want to separate, um, use the directions, but take that the amount they say to use and divide it by four and just use one fourth of the strength of the fertilizer and you can feed them every time you water. Don't forget to put the name on your on your little pots. Either you write it on, and many will put the date on it, or you can use a little marker stick. It doesn't matter, but don't forget to put this on because you will regret it. Trust me, down the road you will want to know what you do have. In case you want to get new ones, you don't want to get double. So just make sure the names follow. Trust me, I didn't do it in the beginning. And I have some plants that are at least 20 years old and I don't know the names. And this is a question I get a lot, very, very often. Please identify my African violet. And I can't do that. There's thousands and thousands of varieties and it's impossible to put a name on something unless you received it with it. <laughs> so make sure you keep your names on it. I hope this video has helped you. If you have further questions, just comment below. And otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.